What's up everybody? My name is Steve. This is Claiming Christianity. And today we're going to talk a little bit about systematic theology. I am going to, it's not going to be a review because you can't really review a gigantic book. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you can. But we're going to talk a little bit about what systematic theology is very briefly here. I'm going to try to keep it simple because I'm a simple guy and I'm not a professor, but I love systematic theology. And a couple of you over the last few years, to be honest, um, quite a few of you have asked about systematic theology to do a review of systematic theologies. Uh, so today we're going to get into that just a little bit. And we'll take a look at what you would get in, um, in the, the one that I just showed you. I have two over here on the table. But let's talk a little bit about it first of all. I love systematic theology. For those of you who don't know, I was born and raised in a church and I got none of that. Uh, not for any particular reason. They just didn't. They just didn't teach it. We didn't go through doctrine, a big word, right? Uh, sometimes it's a big, scary word. But we didn't really discuss doctrine or confessions or, or biblical interpretation. B big old words, right? Here are some favorite words. Hermeneutics, exegesis, eisegesis. I just didn't grow up knowing these things. Then lo and behold, wham, I turned 30. Uh, I was kind of about having my first kid around this time. And I really started studying my faith. I started researching these big words. I started listening to uh, popular Christian apologists such as Greg Kokel um, and J. Warner Wallace. Those were kind of the two that, that I cut my eye teeth on, so to speak, uh, with Stand to Reason um, and Cold Case Christianity. And these guys had answers. Uh, you know, I don't know that I necessarily agreed with everything they said all the time because we don't agree with everything everybody says all the time. But they had answers and they had logical reasons for believing the things that they believe. Since that time, I've become friends with these guys um, and we've interacted on quite a few different occasions. But one of the things I learned about, what does this have to do with systematic theology, Steve? One of the things I learned about, especially when doing apologetics, which is not saying sorry for your faith, it's making a defense for your faith, being able to answer questions that people have, whether they're Christians or whether they're non-Christians, is we need to have a good, solid understanding of Scripture. We need to have a good, solid basis of knowledge and uh, how the Bible works because the Bible can't contradict itself. If the Bible, this is systematic theology right here. If the Bible is God's word and is inerrant and infallible, which it is, um, then it, it can't be wrong and it can't contradict itself. Okay, so that means there are going to be times that it might feel like that's happening. I'm trying to think of a good example. And the only good example I can give is the word justification, right? Uh, the Protestant uh, Protestants uh, or people that have a Protestant understanding of Scripture understand the word and the term justification one way. Uh, Roman Catholics, for example, understand the word justification in a completely and utterly, totally opposite way. Uh, how can that be? They both use Scripture to defend their point of view. Aha, you read the book of James and James says you're justified by your works. It literally says those words. But let me ask you, does that match up with the entire rest of the Bible? The answer is no. In just a plain sense, reading, black and white reading of the words, you're going to read in the book of James. You're justified by your works. Um, are we justified by our works? Very simply, no, we are not. We are justified by Christ and Christ alone. What do we do with that information? The Bible contradicts itself, but it doesn't. And that is where systematic theology comes in because of what we said in the beginning. The Bible cannot contradict itself. So as we start talking about what systematic theology is and how we can understand some of these things, how we can gain clarification for what we're reading, it's to know this. If the Bible seems like it's contradicting itself, it's you, it's not the Bible. Uh, you don't know yet. You, you don't know the whole truth. You haven't, and I'm not trying to make fun of you or give you a hard time. We all run into this problem, but rest assured, the word of God is true and it's accurate all the time. So if something seems funny, it's because us humans 
don't have a full and complete understanding of that thing yet. And we need to keep researching and we need to keep studying. Uh, as far as justification goes, James and Paul are in complete agreement. Uh, they would both tell you that we are justified before the Father in a legal sense uh, by faith and faith alone, by the work of Christ alone. Christ is what gets us into heaven. Nothing we do can ever get us into heaven. Um, that's, that doesn't work that way. James is talking about something different. He's talking about our heart condition and the fact that before men, if we are justified before the Father, our life looks like a certain thing. Now, let's not get off on that tangent. Go research it yourself and read it. I have a couple videos on it, as a matter of fact. So systematic theology is, is in a nutshell, again, I'm gonna, if, if you're a PhD scholar and hermeneutics and exegesis right now, don't yell at me down in the comments because what I'm trying to do here is keep this real uh, basic and keep this real surface level so guys like me can understand. Systematic theology is an understanding of scripture, what scripture says and how um, it says those things and it all matches up. So the whole Bible has to agree. You might have heard the term, you've heard me say it, uh, if you've been a watcher of my videos here for any amount of time, uh, that you interpret the parts in light of the whole Right, so you can't just read one verse in the Bible. Um, Greg Kokel used to say, and I'm sure he still says it from Stand to Reason, says, never read a Bible verse. Does that mean don't read the Bible? No, it means you don't just read one verse. Here's how it works. So let's say we're reading in the New Testament and we wanna understand Romans. So we read a little passage of Romans uh, and maybe we're confused, maybe we don't understand. We want to know a little bit more about what that passage says. So we can do that in a couple of different ways. First of all, not only do we read that passage in Romans, but we need to read all the passages before it and all the passages after it. So we get a contextual understanding of what's happening um, and what Paul's trying to say. And then, if you haven't already, read the entire letter to the Romans. It was a letter. We don't just read one paragraph out of a letter that our parents wrote us, right? So don't do that with Romans. Sit down and read the whole thing, right? All the way through and do that a couple of times. So you get an understand, an understanding of what Paul is trying to say. And then maybe you're stuck on a word, right? Or maybe you're stuck on an idea. So then what do we do? Okay. So then we, then Paul has a couple other letters that he's written, right? So then you go to Paul and see how does Paul use this, this thought or this idea throughout the New Testament, because Paul's writings all come in the New Testament, right? This all works for the Old Testament too. How do the authors, or the author in specific, if it comes to Paul, um, how does how does he use this term or this phrase? Uh, what does he have to say about this? It gives us a little bit better of an understanding of what he's talking about. And then we go to the New Testament as a whole. What does the New Testament say about this particular idea, about justification, about Christ, about who Christ is? And then we expand even further and say, what does the whole of Scripture, what does all of it from Genesis to Revelation, what does it say? What does it show us about justification, since that's the example that we gave? That, in a nutshell, is systematic theology. Because, once again, the Bible cannot contradict itself and it can't be wrong. So, as we... Look at one teeny little part and open that part up wider and wider and wider. We get a better understanding of what scripture is saying because all scripture is God breathed. This is the words of God to us um, as humans to help us learn and understand. Systematic theology in a nutshell is that, is gaining an understanding of what scripture says by using itself to help you understand more and more of it. Don't forget scripture is physically authored. That means the guys that wrote it down by about 40 or so different authors. There's 66 books in the canon and it was written over the period of thousands of years, a couple of thousand years, about 2000 years, probably uh, maybe more than that from before Christ in the old Testament uh, to uh, up to about a hundred years after he was born um, in the new Testament, give or take. Okay. But it's all God breathed and it's all God's word and we need to understand that. So having a good understanding of systematic theology is important. So I've gone to great length to kind of tell you why it's important and explain basically how it works. Helping us understand the parts in light of the whole. 
Now, I used two big fancy phrases at the beginning. And when you're a kid, everybody says, what are you supposed to do for a living? Um, and what's the answer? The answer is, oh, if you didn't, if money wasn't an object, what would you do? This is a, this is not a valid question. Any counselor who gives you this, that's wrong. Uh, because we can't do any, anything. I can't be a linebacker for the 49ers. I just can't be. My body's not designed to do that. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether money's an object or not. The point is, my answer to that question, after I proved my own question wrong, is what would I do if money wasn't an object? Um, I personally would get a PhD or, uh, the, the PhD isn't important, but study uh, biblical exegesis and hermeneutics. That is understanding the text and what is in the text. Uh, I, exegesis is pulling out of the text what's already there. And hermeneutics is the interpretation of that text and how it applies to us today. I love that stuff. Uh, I don't have any degrees. You know, I, I, the Lord has blessed me with certain abilities, um, but I just don't. I don't have the money to go back to school uh, kind of thing, and I don't have the time to do that. But that stuff fascinates me because we have the ability to look and dive deep into scripture, to study it with all the tools and resources that we have today. We have Greek resources, we have commentaries, you know, all these books you see around help us understand that in a little bit better way. And I wanna know what, what God says and I'm, and I'm drawn to it. So that's what I would do. And systematic theology is what, what taught me that I'm excited about that and that I want to know what's in there and I want to know what it says because I grew up in a world where you'd read a couple of Bible verses um, and, and you might misuse those Bible verses. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I cannot do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Once again, if I got onto the field with the 49ers right now, I don't watch sports at all. So this is a funny illustration. Um, but if I got onto the field, I would die. Like, I can't do that. Like, so Philippians 4.13 doesn't mean that. And, but I grew up thinking, oh, that's what it means. Right? Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declareth the Lord. That's not what it means. Okay. We need to go back to scripture and figure out via context and via who wrote it, right? Systematic theology, exegesis and hermeneutics, who wrote it, who it was written to, what the purpose of this book was, what type of uh, literature it was. These are all things that um, you're going to come across in systematic theology, which is going to help you understand the Bible better. Without further ado, the intro to that went way long. I'm at 12 minutes already. I hope you're still with me because this important video, I think it's exciting. Let's jump over to the table and let me show you. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple books that I'm just going to real briefly go through one of them because I've read it a couple times. So let's jump over. So these are the two that I have currently. Okay. Christian Theology by Millard Erickson. I got recommended. Um, I've skimmed through this one. You can tell they're big, right? These are big, fat books. I've skimmed through it. I have not read the whole thing. I just kind of haven't gotten around to it. Someday I will, but I got it recommended to me. I keep it on my shelf because it's a valuable resource. This one, however, Systematic Theology by Wayne Grudem. Now, this is, I believe, the third edition, and they're on the fourth edition now, so it probably looks slightly different than this. I like this one. I got a lot out of it. I have I have read it twice. This this is a fat book. Anybody who's known me personally in my real life uh, for any length of time would laugh their head off thinking I read through this book twice um, because I just didn't do well in school. When I was in school in junior high and high school, I just struggled, you know, for whatever reason, and I didn't read a thing. Um, but I sat down and I've read this, um, the third edition, this exact book. You'll see all my highlights and stuff in here as we go through it. And then uh, the fourth edition, and I got the fourth edition on Audible, and so I can listen to it. So let me break this book down for you. I like Grudem. Now, there are a number of systematic theologies. There's Reformed systematic theologies. Um, I don't have a whole list of, of those. And, and uh, let me know down in the comments. If you are a student of, of systematic theology and exegesis and hermeneutics, let me know what systematic theologies you read and you like um, down in the comments because I'm curious uh, just to hear what you guys have to say. But this is a systematic theology uh, book, right? And, and I just like the way Grudem broke his book down. He broke it down into, you can tell by my little tabs here, he broke it down into essentially different doctrines. The doctrine of the word of God. That would be scripture, right? So then he talks about different parts, what scripture is how it works, 
And one of the things that I like about the way that he wrote this book is each chapter, uh, there's, let's see, let's open up to, uh, <laughs> there's technically like hundreds, if not hundreds, there is technically 57 chapters. Well, that's because each chapter is only like four or five pages, right? And that's good because you can study these. And by the way, if you didn't notice, it's almost, you could read one chapter a week and get this done in just over a year. And one chapter a week is easy because you're looking at it. Okay, and we're at chapter two already, the word of God. Chapter two is five pages. Half that information in the five pages in this particular systematic theology, he goes through and explains things. He gives you definitions and, and how it works and, and how the text of scripture works together. And then he gives you questions for personal application here. Okay, so it's not, again, this is very doable. I encourage you to get a solid systematic theology. At this point, I'm recommending Grudem. Um, I'll drop a link down in the description because I like the way that it's broken down. Uh, it gives you questions for personal application. It gives you special terms that you might have learned um, and that you might want to know. And then it gives you some dates and some other works you might want to check you know, these are J.I. Packer, some different uh, uh, people that have written on the, the specific subject. And this is one of my favorite things. And then he ends his little chapters with a hymn. Um, and I just like it. And the hymns just, I just read through the hymn. Uh, oftentimes the hymn um, kind of reflects something that is being talked about in the particular chapter. And that's how this systematic theology works. Okay, so then we're talking about the word of God. Then he breaks down the canon of scripture. What is the canon of scripture? A really basic understanding of how we get to see all my little notes here. Uh, understanding of how we got it. What is and what is not scripture. Like I mentioned in this video, there's 66 books in the canon. The Apocrypha, the Deuterocanonical text, those are not God-breathed, inerrant, infallible word of God. Some religions say that they are, but they're not. Um, and he will explain some of that to you as you go through and learn these. Um, and then again, if you're really motivated, you can pick up some of these extra resources that he notes and, and read some books on that. So you have the word of God. Okay. Then you have the doctrine of God. Okay. Now that we've learned about scripture and how to read through scripture and how to understand scripture better in these handful of chapters, who is God? Uh, what about him? The existence of God in community, the attributes of God. Okay. And, and, and once again, it's, it's going to be marrying all of scripture together. We're learning about who God is. We're learning about what scripture is using all of scripture together, knowing that it can't contradict itself and that it can't be wrong. So we need to read it as such and take a step back and figure that out. And then we need to know a little bit about ourselves, right? The doctrine of man, uh, then we have the doctrine of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Who are Christ and who are the Holy Spirit? What does scripture have to say about that? And how does that work into all the rest of this? Okay. The doctrine um, of the application of redemption. How does redemption work? This is a big one. Uh, that, that particular section helped me learn a whole lot about the fact that Christ is sufficient. And Christ is infinitely sufficient, which means... Uh, he, that makes it capable for him to pay for all of our sins. Well, how does one man pay for all of our sins? Because his life is infinitely valuable. There's no end to his value, but our value is not that. Um, so you can't, if you take away a little bit, if you have infinity uh, minus five, what do you have left? You still have infinity left. You see how that works? It's a real basic description. Okay, then the doctrine of the church. What is the church? What does scripture say about the church? How does the church work? The doctrine of the future. Okay, what is the future, the second coming, all this kind of stuff. And then you do have some historic faith uh, confessions, the Nicene Creed, the Apostles' Creed. He goes through that stuff a little bit. So that was a really quick run through of uh, this particular systematic textbook. And the reason that uh, I went through this one is A, because again, I've read through it twice. I learned a whole lot. I learned about how to interpret scripture, how scripture works, a better understanding of who God is and who I am and what the church is and what the church is for. And all that information came from God's word. It comes from scripture because once again, Scripture is inerrant and infallible because it's the word of God. So it can't be wrong and it can't contradict itself. Once you know that, 
going into reading the Bible and your daily readings uh, might look a little bit different as you read the whole of Scripture, which we should be doing on a regular basis, taking in the entire counsel of God on a regular basis. Right. So I encourage you um, to pick up a systematic theology textbook. I'll drop a link to this one because, again, I like this one and I've read it. I haven't read them all. You saw how thick and big they are. Um, unfortunately, I can't just read every systematic theology out there, uh, but I'm anxious to hear what you guys think, what questions you might have about systematic theology. I want to once again repeat that this was a really basic understanding of what systematic theology is, a real basic understanding of how it works in hopes that I'm encouraging and equipping you to go study it for yourself. You want to know more about what systematic theology is? Buy Grudem's book. It's really not that expensive. It really isn't. Um, buy his book and read it. Read one chapter a week. Reading through one of those chapters will take you less than 20 minutes. Uh, okay, a day, like less than 20 minutes a week. You can spare that much time and go through it for a whole year. You don't got, I, I can almost guarantee you, if you have a heart for scripture and you're, and you're in it, and I hope you are, once you read, start reading one chapter, you're going to want to read more and more and more because it's exciting to learn how to get into it. It's exciting to learn how, uh, the word of God works and about how to understand it better, which leads us to being able to hermeneutics, apply it to our own lives better, understand who God is better. And it's going to create this hunger and it's going to create this thirst. Um, so I'm not going to go into it at, on a prof professor level because, hey, I'm not a professor. Um, I, I haven't studied this formally. I, I wish that I had, but I had one thing that I one thing I have done and you can do this for free also is there used to be courses online from like Open Biola. I took a course on uh, on hermeneutics, uh, biblical interpretation. I, I say took, I audited it. Uh, Walt Russell uh, gave the course. I think those courses still exist on YouTube. Um, and you can watch him teach this course on basic biblical introduction that he taught to a seminary students years ago. And I got so much good, solid information from learning how the Bible works how we interpret it, uh, how how it doesn't contradict itself and how we can use it to help us understand itself a lot better because the Bible is the best interpreter of itself. I hope this has been valuable. I hope you've hung in there and watched it with me because again, I love doing the Bible reviews. I know you guys are excited about Bible reviews. I have lots more coming out for those of you who've been following along. Um, but this stuff is, having a good Bible is really, really important and seeing what's new. But being able to read the Bible and understand it and be in it day to day, that's the really important part. That's what I hope that I'm encouraging you to do with all this information. For those of you who have, been, uh, who have stayed tuned for the last handful of weeks and videos, I have a handful of Bibles to give away. Um, so make sure you're keeping up with the channel because I'm going to give them away when it makes the most amount of sense. Um, and kind of... Uh, because I got blessed with a handful of Bibles to give away. So make sure you're keeping an eye up on the channel because I'll give them away as often as possible, as often as I have them. I want to say thank you to those who have donated. Uh, again, I, I had a bunch of Bibles donated that are basically brand new that I'm able to give away. I've had some of you folks that have donated via Patreon and PayPal. Um, and I, I can't thank you enough. It, it's first and foremost, a huge encouragement to me, uh, letting me know that, that you guys at least it's worth your time and, and that you're appreciative and that sure is heartwarming to me and be uh, to be honest with you, I'm saving up and for a new computer so I can try to run this channel even better. Um, so those things help out. So, so I can uh, just continue this ministry and the things and do giveaways and send that kind of information out. So thank you so much for being subscribers, for being for this channel and for following along. I hope that you've gotten some good, valuable information out of this talk on systematic theology and that it's helped encourage and equip you to be the Christian that you claim to be.